Shelly Bonner. Welcome back. Okay, I'm super excited to be here, like always, like I always tell you, and share another machine quilting video. I love this quilt. It brings back so many memories. So before we get into it and I tell you all about it, the name of this pattern is Ferris Wheel, and I will post a link below that directs you to the pattern. This is a client quilt. My client Leanne pieced this quilt, and I was lucky enough to custom machine quilt this for her. So I get really excited and sometimes kind of sentimental about some of the quilts that I quilt. This one, Leanne made this quilt, but her friend Jen also made another version. Actually, I think I've quilted a few versions that my clients have made, and I just loved it. But the first one I did, I think, was probably around eight or nine years ago. And to be able to now, this many years later, quilt that same quilt, almost the exact same as that original one, was really just this cool kind of bringing it all home experience or moment or whatever you want to call it for me. So something just kind of fun that I thought I would share with you today. Anyways, today I'm going to be quilting just a little detail. I'm going to share just a snippet using my machine quilting rulers to quilt out the fun little motif on this block. So I will be using my mini four-in-one machine quilting ruler. I obviously do all of my quilting on my Gamel 22 inch machine hand guided quilting. I am stitching in the stitch regulated mode and I have my stitch length set at 13 stitches per inch. The thread that I'm using here on my top, I have so fine thread. On my bottom, on my bobbin, I have bottom line. That's a combination that I love to use. I've had really great success with that combination. Um, I am going to share a full in-depth exclusive video showing you more of my process working through this quilt over in the Peace and Quilt Academy. So you can find all of that over on our website, peaceandquilt.com. But let's hop over to my machine and let's get stitching. All right, here is this super cute quilt after the quilting is all complete. So with a quilt like this, when I look at it, I already know that I want Leanne's piecing, I want those Ferris wheels to really pop and be the focal on the quilt. I want my second, my quilting to become secondary to what the pattern's doing. So to really make that happen, in each of the corner stones that are created, I'm going to quilt this fun point to point motif that I'll show you in just a second. And then in all of my background filler, I am going to quilt pebbles. I am also going to stitch in the ditch around every single one of those Ferris wheels, so around all of the prints and also the black pieces. And then I will stitch a fun swirl right on the center of each of those Ferris wheels. So they become the focal, they stand out. And then I do have that little bit of a secondary design that comes to life with my ruler quilting. I love this quilt. Let's hop over to the machine and get stitching. So at this point, I have already started quilting on my quilt and I've already quilted the border across the top of the quilt and then as far down as my throat space would allow me on the left side. Because I do quilt on a long arm machine, most often I'm working top to bottom, left to right. With this quilt, I'm just going to be using one thread color, the So Fine color number 401 on top. So I'll just work top to bottom, left to right. So what I'm showing you right here, I am stitching that fun secondary motif using the medium size curve on my mini four in one machine quilting ruler. Whenever I'm working with machine quilting rulers, like you can see here, I'm holding my ruler so it's a quarter of an inch away from where I want my thread to intersect. I do have a ruler foot on my Gamel machine. By using a ruler foot, I know that from my needle position to the outside of that foot, it's exactly a quarter of an inch. That's the way that a true ruler foot is designed. They're a great tool to help you with your quilting. So you can see that I start out by stitching that point to point curve. And then after that, I add a fun little echo that still comes from the points, but doesn't go all the way back into the center. Kind of a different angle, really dresses it up. With a quilt like this, then I will start quilting my blocks as I quilt that motif but maybe not the whole block. I kind of will just work randomly my way across the block. No rules when it comes to my machine quilting. So you can see I went right into outlining, stitching in the ditch around one of those petals, the blade, and then I quilted a few pebbles. Now I'm back to working with my machine quilting rulers. So as long as I feel like I'm being pretty consistent across the quilt, that's how I quilt. Now the reason that I'm not quilting this full block at this time 
I wasn't 100% sure this was the motif that I wanted in these blocks. So sometimes on a quilt like this, I will go through and stitch out a few of them just to give me an idea. And there are definitely times, if you look real close there, you can actually see my seam ripper in the background. So as I was quilting this design out, I actually decided that I wanted to add a few more pebbles. So on this, watch closely and see that I do stitch in a ditch around this cornerstone block. After I quilted those, I came back and looked at the quilt and decided I really want that area to be filled in with pebbles as well. So yes, I did do a bit of unpicking on this quilt. And now back into some pebbles. So I always work with my extended base plate on my machine as well. Whenever you're doing ruler work, that's a tool that you need to have on your machine. You can't see it here because it's underneath the quilt, but it's a large flat surface that extends your working area. That's also what makes it so that I can lay my rulers right on my quilt and still have a nice large flat area. If you don't have an extended base plate, I'm going to say it's pretty near impossible to really achieve great results when doing machine quilting on a long arm. If you're working on a sit down machine, you can do this amazing ruler work as well. I've seen it done on some of the most incredible quilts ever on sit down machines. You just wanna make sure that you have a really nice, large, flat working area. Now this is just the top portion, stitching out that fun little motif, but as I advance my quilt, I will stitch that design in each of the cornerstones with four sides instead of the three like I'm showing you here. I'll repeat that same pattern. You'll see on this one how I'll stitch three working across from left to right and then back. With the four, I just start, work my way all the way around and then add an echo all the way around and then continue into my stitching. Another little tip or trick I like to do when machine quilting, I try to stitch as continuous as possible. So there are definitely times where I will stitch over my original stitch lines. Again, I'm using really fine thread, so I'm okay stitching over those original stitch lines.
I'm just sitting here. I got time. It's clear to see from up here. The world seems small. We can sit together. It's so beautiful. You and me. Meant to be. I hope you all found just a little bit of inspiration from today's fun little sneak peek video. And grab your machine quilting ruler, stitch something out, share it with us in our Peace and Quilt Show and Tell Facebook group. I love seeing what you're working on. Like I said, I will have a full exclusive in-depth video available in the Peace and Quilt Academy sharing my process more in-depth quilting this beautiful Ferris wheel quilt. Have a great day, everybody.